Hey guys, VFS here again, and today is episode 11. <laughs> We've got a lot of building stuff to get to. I think I just showed you a sneak peek or an absolute spoiler, depending on your stance. <laughs> But uh, we've got a lot of stuff to get to, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we are going to do is pack up everything that is in the mausoleum. We are going to say farewell to our temporary setup and move everything into that enormous yawning black hole over there. <laughs> Maybe the first thing we should do is put down some torches, actually. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've collected everything. Uh, this is everything that we had in there, sands, the chickens, and the actual forestry machinery, and our storage system, which we are going to just kind of move uh, with, you know, cables, and it's that's not going to be that big of a deal. But, so what I'm thinking is that this front room is going to be a livable area. This is going to be where we do most of our crafting, and of course we're going to set up auto-crafting. And then this back area is going to be where the machines actually live. And we are not going to want to come back here too often. I think I'm going to build this into kind of like a, a maze-like bit of a tunnel entrance so that it, it's actually somewhat difficult to get into here. So we wouldn't want to come back here too often. This is where all of the uh, machinery that handles the logic of the auto-processing and crafting is going to be. And just in general, this is the stuff that we just kind of want to, you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So, I wish I was playing on a server because this would be a great time to do a time lapse. But instead, I'm just going to put a cut. I'm going to put down the machines that we don't want up front in that back area. And then I'm going to get this front room here situated. Now, actually, inside the cave, I'm thinking like a bit of like an underground garden. Because we have Batania, they have those shimmering mushrooms. I haven't actually looked if it's possible to make them. Uh, let's see, I'm sure... Okay, so yeah, we can. Okay, so I've laid down the initial machines, these are just the ones that we already had, and uh, there's a couple of things that I would like to discuss. The first being that I don't like how perfect these machines are laid out. This does not seem like it fits into the kind of cave environment that we're going for because everything is, you know, squared off and, and perfect. So I did a little bit of searching around online to look at actual, like, real-life cave houses. And something that I'm noticing in a great many of them is that a lot of them have round features. And I think it has something to do with the support of actually living inside of a cave and having to bear a lot of the weight of rocks. So we are going to make some cutouts in various areas and those cutouts are going to be where our different machinery lives rather than having them perfectly stacked in one spot. Now I'm not too worried about it actually being really inconvenient A because we already have um, wireless crafting through our crafting grid, B we have the transmutation table, and C we have flight. So I'm, I'm even though it, it may be set up in an inconvenient way, we are well past the tech stage uh, where it would actually affect us too much. So, right, at this point, it's just the aesthetic more than uh, actual practicality. Uh, so that's what I am thinking of. Now, there is a mod in this pack that I have never played with before called building gadgets that is supposed to make it a lot easier to do stuff like stairs as well as patterns and stuff like that. So let's check this mod out. Uh, that would be kind of expensive in in early early days, but not so much. This does take energy, but it does not look like it's charging. Oh, that wire charger doesn't have power. Why do you not have power? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Are you extracting? Always active. Insert. It doesn't matter that it's extracting, but why don't you have power? Do you only take power from a certain side? No. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's throw the gadget in there for the time being. Okay. I don't 
know why a vet doesn't have power. That's I will I will mess with it. Is it No? This is definitely draining power. Hmm. Let's attach a point. I thought it would pull the power from the battery bank. But maybe something else is pulling. Now do you have power? Okay. So it doesn't actually pull out of the battery bank. Weird. I thought it would. You need a point. Anyway, okay, so this guy, the building gadget. Now this, uh, let's see. How do we change mode? <laughs> T, no, it's chat. You, no. Let's see. It might be uh, overwritten somewhere. Uh, building mm, gadget? No. What is this block called? Yeah, building gadget. Um, okay, change mode. That's better builders ones. Anchor mode switch. Okay. Uh, I guess that's something. <laughs> there we go. Nine. Uh, <laughs> every key is like taken. <laughs> um, there, okay. Now I have to remember that. So nine is change mode. Okay, so we should be able to build stairs and then change the range of those stairs as well as undo what we have done. Okay, so in order to actually build, we either need blocks in our inventory or we need construction paste. Uh, what is that? No, oh, it's a template manager. Okay. So, for instance, we are going to build with stone just to get started. And then this also works as an exchanger. Uh, let's see, let's go into here to get stone. Just regular smooth stone, just to demonstrate, kind of test this out. Okay, so I want to use smooth stone. Ooh. Oh, okay, so if you hold it, you can select what you want. We want stairs. Yes. Okay. And do I need to like select the block? Oh, there we go. Okay, so you have to actually select the building material and then you can see the ghost of right now range 3, range 4 stairwell that we are going to build. Okay, and it doesn't replace things like torches or machinery. It'll just build on top of them. So if we wanted to put down a 4 block stairwell uh, here, let's say, or maybe over here. We just right click and it will build taking the stone out of our inventory. So I'm going super slow because I've never used this before, but uh, this should pretty nicely expedite building once you get used to actually using it. And it has uh, you can see the radial menu build to me. So if you wanted to do like a line, just a line of blocks, um, it's weird that it doesn't place it on the gr ground. Oh, okay. You have to actually hit something with it. So if I do that, it will just lay debt from where I'm targeting to me. And then you can undo it and it'll pick the blocks back up. This is very nifty. <laughs> uh, okay, so now that's the the foundation for that. And let's say we are gonna want a two block space, but we're gonna want to make this a circle, uh, like a sphere in here, and then inside, tucked inside of this, is where our machines are gonna live. So let's say here to. 
here. Mm, one more, and then we can start going up. Maybe something like this. And so out by two, and then one, and then up by three, and then one. So we've just got like a little cubby up here that is going to be a hollow for uh, some machinery. And okay, that'll work. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna toy with this and I'm gonna increase the lighting because obviously you can't see anything at all. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so what I've got here is I've just made the outline for this little cubby hole, and this is gonna be where we process all of our forestry income right here. So I've got an ender chest and this is uh, going to receive all of the combs that we are producing and it is set to extract and insert both on the green and so it is extracting into these three separators and these guys are set to input on the back and export on the top and then I've got ender IO conduits set to extract always active from the top and that's just that's how they're running so they're kind of making a loop here where the combs are coming in and it is uh, breaking down into these various items items and then getting spit back out into the ender chest okay so I think I know what I'm gonna do under here we have not messed with the fluid portion of refined storage but that is what this is going to be this is going to become a little lake, a little pond in our cavern and we're gonna decorate it with the mushrooms on the side but very sneakily in the wall here there's going to be a pump and this pump is going to be essentially filling a designated refined storage fluid disc with water and it's going to be using our pond as the infinite water source that we are pumping out of and everything is going to be set up right here so the the uh, pump is going to sit in this block so it will be hidden and then from this side you're just going to see the decorative element of it okay so i definitely want to use pods all in the the block palette and in order to make that we're going to need rich phyto grow and in order to make that we're going to need either sawdust or pulverized some things. Now we can do either of these, but sawdust comes with a machine, a new machine. We either even need the pulverizer or the sawmill. Uh, we can do it through bees, but I'm, I'm really kind of over bees. <laughs> so I'm thinking we're really, we don't have either of these machines, but doing it through the sawmill will give us extra wood. Uh, and this isn't necessary because we have the table, but, you know, slapping new machines on the wall is kind of part of the fun of <laughs> modded. So let's go ahead and make these guys really quick. Let's make the sawmill. And uh, what do we need? We need a saw blade and a reception coil. Uh, do I have a saw blade? Not that one. Okay, that would be easy to make. I guess we'll just make both of them here. It's not a huge deal that we save metals. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have all my thermal expansion stuff over here. So there's a sawmill. And then let's get an upgrade. Uh, resident upgrade. I'm scrolling down on my mouse, but it's going left. That is, that's not the way that it's supposed to work. <laughs> uh, okay. Do we need a blade actually in there? I don't think so. Okay, so if we throw wood in here, let's throw uh, not planks specifically. <laughs> let's throw some of this cherry wood in. Does this work with the forestry woods? Yes, it does. Okay, so there is a little bit of sawdust produced. So now we should be able to make the phyto grow. Uh, rich fighter grow is what we need. So there we go. Okay, so this stuff actually does not have EMC and neither does the sawdust. So that is kind of exciting because it means we can actually make use of the machines. 
All right, so in order to make podzol, we need this. So we're gonna need a bucket of water. Let's get a bucket out. Uh, or eight buckets, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. <laughs> podzol. Okay, there we go. Now we can, well, it's not actually going to make use of the machines because we can just pull the finished product out. <laughs> but there you go. There's making pods all. Uh, let's slap that guy down right there and move on with developing the black palette. So this is what we've got so far, and and I'm, I really like it. Now, up at the top there, I've got brownstone. My idea with this is maybe that we're not actually a completely stone gray palette cave, but more of like a, like a desert. We've got so we've, we're using sandstone, chiseled sandstone, and then up top where it's going to start fading into regular stone, I've got brownstone, and then we'll be using slabs and various forms of that, as well as a couple shades of uh, flat blocks. They have like a, a nice, you know, taupe, beige kind of colored range. That will help to fade a little more easily into the true gray of the roof. But on the floor, we've, we've got sandstone and this really beautiful coral color, as well as uh, this is Binnie's Hawthorne Wood. This also has a really, really pretty, uh, like, very a lighter kind of coral flesh color. And then this kind of grayish bark on the outside has a lot of, a lot of contrast. I think it looks really good together. And then we're using red wool carpet that has been chiseled. And then we've got our mushrooms back here. Now, something to take note of when you break the covers for refined storage, it always breaks the cable that is on the other side. Always. I, I'm assuming that you need to make the uh, refined storage tool to avoid that, but I, I'm not certain. So just keep that in mind that no matter what you do, you're going to break the cable with, with a pick. Oh, I missed a spot. Uh, so I think that this is going to be the color palette for the cave for the most part. I really like it. It's it's full of a lot of contrast and, and it leaves room for a lot of you know vibrant color. Like I mean there's not much there, but what is there really pops out. So I am a fan. <laughs> Alright, so we are gonna try something a little bit different this time around. This was obviously a time lapse. And you guys let me know down in the comments whether you like the kind of, you know, fast building or if you would prefer that I completely cut building out entirely or if you really like this and you would like to see more of it. I just thought we would give it a shot because I, I spent, like, this time lapse rate is an, an hour of building, just a straight, I think, like, 59 minutes of building. And what I was doing before, like, with the mausoleum, uh... I spent probably two or three hours putting that together and so if that's you know something that you guys would like to see then I will stop cutting it out <laughs> and just jumping all over the place with edits and I will do time lapses like this so that you can actually watch it progress. Unfortunately I can only do a first person time lapse right now uh, just again because I don't have a server so I can't exactly put a another you know, account in like spectator mode and just watch things happen from afar. But you know, it just again, we'll see how it goes, whether you guys like it or not. Um, so in building this, it was really kind of just a matter of testing the blocks out and kind of getting that mixed gray to beige gradient that I was looking for. And this is by no means done. I build in much the same way that I write in that I tend to put the foundations first and then over time I will come back and I will add details and I will gradually sharpen and chisel and 
sculpt until I get a satisfactory end product. I don't try to do everything at once and, you know, from like right out of the gate from the get go, get something that I would consider polished and finished. So this is just the foundation. Uh, we are going to do a lot with this cave. I'm planning on doing a lot at the entrance. I want this this really dark uh, cave entrance so that it looks a little ominous and mysterious. I, I might use some kind of darkened, like the dark ineffable glass or something like that. Something to lend the entrance uh, that ominous vibe. And then once you walk through it, then it opens up into this really bright, cheerful, and colorful kind of desert-like cave. And, you know, then we've got all the machinery, then you get the, the, the fun the mechanical workings that happen inside. Uh, but I, I think I, I like that. And I think that it fits with the theme of a druid, because it, uh, at least with my experience with, like, D&D &D druids, WoW druids, just, you know, any sort of fantasy druid, it always brings a bear to mind, at least for me. And, you know, so bears, caves, they kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> Uh, so I thought that I, I would play that up and it goes as well with the kind of spooky theme with the mausoleum You know with this kind of intimidating cave in the background, but of course it's Minecraft So once you walk through the the opening uh, You know then this like world of magic just kind of opens up <laughs> So that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do with this overall build uh, but it will change over time as, you know, just I discover new blocks or new building techniques or just absolutely hate what I've put down. <laughs> it can go in either direction. <laughs> so, you know, one of the most important things I think I've ever discovered as far as creative processes in general, it doesn't matter whether it's art, like painting, or if it's writing, or you know, in building, in video games, any kind of creative element that you can pick up, you have to be willing to destroy what you have done. <laughs> you cannot become attached to anything. So, you know, if you guys are watching this and you're going, oh, wow, that is not the most attractive looking thing. <laughs> You know, don't be afraid to, to talk to me, to leave a comment and, and leave a suggestion or you know, maybe you have a better eye for color than I do. Maybe, you know, the the coral color that I picked out is like really weird looking to you or whatever. S say something. It's fine. I, I am a writer. I can I take criticism. <laughs> you know, as long as it is a healthy criticism. Don't don't roll up in here and try to attack me because, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a 12 year old child. It, it won't go over well. <laughs> but, you know, creative... Uh, Creative tasks, oftentimes because it's created by one person and, and one person only, it is very unique to that person, right? So obviously things are going to be kind of specialized to and tailored to what I like. But I would like to build a community. I would like this to be something that you guys look forward to seeing every other day, you know, stopping by and, and seeing how things are progressing and so some feedback is always welcomed and appreciated. Just leave that down in the comments below. And I will read them. Obviously, this is a very, very small, brand new channel. So go ahead, say something. I will gladly answer. <laughs> I've got a little bit of flower decor as well as some potions and I threw some redstone blocks in the ceiling just for a little bit of Something a little different, and then I used uh, the Tinkerit's Construct new chest uh, models because they kind of look like nightstands. And I tried to power these two lamps, these yellow cage lamps, from the same redstone block. I thought it made a nice border trim there uh, with the the red alloy wire. So we've got. I may, uh, you know, draw that along. Uh, throughout other areas because it does make a nice little decorative element there. Um, I'm not sure if I want to put a door here or not. I kind of like it open like that. It looks looks kind of cool. Uh, I left a little one-way walkway here. We've got a little painting on the wall. So this out here is going to be maybe 
See, the thing is, I don't want to smooth the wall out, but obviously this is a very irregular shape and it's not going to lend well to any kind of symmetrical building, so... We'll have to see. We might not do anything with this mall. Th this wall, <laughs> this might just be itself. Uh, what I was thinking is the next mod that we're going to get into is Thomcraft because I want the little niter uh, glow dots. Yeah, they kind of look like little fairies or like lightning bugs, which is, uh, you know, highly appropriate for a druid. So we're going to get into Thomcraft next. And they also have those uh, crystal clusters. And this may be a really, really cool place to decorate with those as, you know, kind of like a crystal cavern or something like that. It's going to go really well with our mushrooms where we just, you know, the magic of nature growing all over the place. So some of, uh, I, I did leave this a little sparsely decorated and, and that is because I was thinking that those crystals come in all kinds of colors and, and they may go, they may help to fill in the spaces a little bit, especially in these like strange spots here. So Thomcraft Niter and crystals. Uh, I also, I'm thinking the kitchen for blackheads, or cooking for blackheads will be like in a little kitchen area maybe in here, just a, a little tiny setup, or maybe along this wall here. And then over here we've got just a little study, nothing actually functional in here, just, uh, just, you know, just a little study to come in and do some things. We may have an enchanter in black here, or maybe like an experience obelisk can sit right there. And we've got a, a little chair <laughs> that we can sit in to read our books. <laughs> By the way, did I tell you that I'm an author? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think that this is going to work out fairly nicely. I do, I like this like kind of open plan layout. I, I'm going to put Niter as well as my usual trick where I put glowstone inside of a block and then cover it up because these I hate torches on the ground. <laughs> I absolutely hate torches. I don't mind the one in the study so much because it is up and uh, oh never mind I replaced it with a lamp so actually I did mind the one in the study. <laughs> and then obviously I used uh, lamps in here. I used like nightstand lamps. Uh, I think I just I think it looks much better. Open flame Especially with how much wood <laughs> we use to build, as well as, you know, these, like, cramped uh, enclosures. I just, this is just, this is death. This is how you die of smoke inhalation and carbon monoxide. <laughs> so, I don't, I just, I really hate the open torches. I don't, I don't know why there's a thing, but we're going to do away with that as soon as we get into Thomcraft. And like I said, that is going to be the next episode. So next episode, we're going to take off with Thomcraft. And I think we're going to do the Creeper Enclosure next. Uh, and I may do a time lapse of actually building the entirety of that. And then we'll just slow it down and run it in regular time when we actually put the Creepers in. So you can see how many times I... You have uh, I get exploded by the creeper. <laughs> also, I don't know if I showed you guys this. I went ahead and put like these guys a 3D rendering of Ender Pearls on the Enderman farm. Oh, they're in the back. Okay, I was like, why is everybody missing? <laughs> Where is everybody? Okay, there's still everybody's here. They're just hiding. That is hilarious that they're. Just depositing the mycelium wherever they please. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I think that we have made quite a bit of progress today. This was a massive, massive undertaking as far as building is concerned. This cave is enormous. So, uh, yeah, Thumbcraft next and the creeper enclosure. And then we're going to get into automation. I have a massive Binny's automation build that I am trying to piece together in my creative world, then uh, I will, I'm like, what I'm doing right now is kind of leading into that massive build. We're going to automate Binny's dies because there's no way to dupe those blocks. 
I tried. I tried with the building gadgets mod. It says invalid block if you target the minis blocks. There's no way to... Uh, there's no way to, like, target a specific color because even in creative mode with the extensive testing and a garden that is completely enclosed with stone or glass, the, the flowers still randomly like become whatever color they want to so even in a, a garden bed completely full of like uh you know all the same color like say i went into the creative quest book and or the creative inventory and just put down all crimson germlings in an enclosed garden you still immediately within the first one or two generations have like a gray flower or you know blue flower like literally everything except crimson <laughs> so in this pack it is not possible to automate a specific color because there's no way to right click with a tool in this pack and you have to right you have to the only way to duplicate a germling and grow the same exact type is with shears by right clicking with shears and we can't do that in this pack so we're gonna have to get creative with how we, basically how we farm these flowers because I, when I build the city, I wanna be able to use those blocks. Um, so that is kind of what I am leading towards right now, just working on in the background and getting that ginormous automation area in the back of the cave set up is in preparation for that. So let's see, while we're here, uh, it's still got three. That has nothing. This has vines. <laughs> All right, we're not ready on any of these guys. I'm still waiting to get the Myrtle Ebony. Uh, I don't have the Wenge either. We just we're not getting the right type of pollen caught. So I may take down that entire forest and plant only the trees that I need to get that specific those two specific saplings. And then we're gonna take the whole forest down anyway because obviously this right now is just a bit of um a catastrophe <laughs> we're gonna go a little bit more like these guys where oh that tree looks like it got sheared somehow i don't know how that happened uh, uh but obviously i i changed the trees out in front of the monastery out in front of the mausoleum uh to be a more appropriate for actually being in front of a mausoleum where it, it looks more like a lane leading to the front door instead of an overgrown, you know, just collection of random trees. So I've got these, these wild cherry leaves and lemon tree out front here. I thought, you know, fruit trees would be a little appropriate here. And then we've got the poplar trees uh, just because they're, you know, kind of tall. They're a little like intimidating, you know, like they just, they like a loom over you. So I thought it, it would look good in front of a mausoleum. I may change the wood out though. I think a dark wood would look really, really kind of give this a, a little bit of a spooky kind of haunted feeling. And you know, and again, it's like they're crowding in on the side. So I think it fits the, the spookiness of the mausoleum. We've got a beautiful white willow. And then over here I planted an olive tree and another wild cherry tree just to kind of, you know, ch change up the, the tree look that we have around and again because our, our druid would probably be more inclined for something like this it's like just really wild overgrown look um that's also why i put all these vines over the front of the cavern it did it just be something that a druid would really enjoy and this is kind of like the last vestiges of the manicured city uh along here so we're we're moving we're making progress i also have a very really, really funny idea for the chicken choir <laughs> uh, we we will get to these guys I have not forgotten about them I'm just this is there's a lot of building that goes into this part and you know building is always really time-consuming you can get lost in this for freaking months months and months <laughs> so that's where we are right now and when we come back next time uh, we are going to like I was saying creeper farm craft and then i uh, thinking that we're going to build the monastery up on top of this little hill and then we're going to have a stone path that leads down into the forest and so I think Saul will live in the monastery and horseradish 
we'll live down in the forest with her bees and uh, and so we'll get our villagers some houses going we'll finish putting the snow on this mountain because uh, it looks like this is pretty much this is gonna stay here and we'll move on from there <laughs> So, okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. That's going to do it for me today, and I will see you next time. Bye!